Thank you. All right. Well, first of all, it's nice to see so many smiling faces. <laughs> this already tells you that I'm not a comedian, otherwise I would be paid for better jokes. Uh, my name is Andy Grabner, or Andreas Grabner, but please call me Andy. It's always easier. I always say that only my mom calls me Andreas, if I did something rude. Um, my, I'm originally from Austria. I actually live in Austria, so I also want to say thanks uh, for actually allowing me to come here. And I know a lot of uh, international speakers that couldn't make it to KubeCon. I was one of the lucky ones that got an exception to travel here. I've been in performance engineering for the last 20 years. And uh, I want to share a couple of things that I've learned in my life as a performance engineer, especially around application performance, around distributed performance, but not about just like how do you do performance testing or performance engineering, but really how we automate all of this. And this is where Captain comes into play, right? Um, Captain is a CNCF sandbox project. We are hopefully soon reaching incubator status. And uh, yeah, I want to share with you what I've learned and how I hope I can make your life easier in case you're really interested in building and optimizing uh, or building better performing systems and optimizing your systems. All the links and how you reach me and how you fo can follow up on Captain are uh, on the slide. Now, one thing that I've learned over my last 20 years is when I do performance analysis, I always look at performance patterns. And I want to start with this before I go into the core part of this talk, which is how we can automate performance analysis based on SLO service level objectives. Why are performance patterns, in, patterns important? Because this is what I do in my life when I analyze application performance. I typically look at things like distributed traces to understand the architecture, especially in distributed systems. Hopefully, I mean, for the people in the room, distributed traces is something we are hopefully all aware of. Who is looking at distributed traces? Yes. So this is actually a small distributed trace. It starts with the front end load balancer with some legacy systems, some microservices, some databases, some third party, some load balancers and so on. This is a, uh, from a company in Germany called Stepstone. I did a presentation with them a couple of years ago where they talked about how they moved uh, to a container-based environment and how kind of their architecture changed. And the reason why this is important is you have to understand your architecture. You have to understand how components talk to each other to identify very important patterns that tell you if this architecture can actually scale or not. Now, the number one pattern that I always find, and this is nothing new, but I have to repeat it because I see it every day. That's the N plus one query pattern. What you see here is a distributed trace, a single distributed trace from one of my friends who 15 years ago he started his own company building an e-commerce store, very small for very small shops. Over the years, it scaled and scaled. Now his e-commerce shop is very popular in, in Europe. Unfortunately, when you look at this distributed trace, it shows this very interesting pattern. This is a trace for the search feature of his e-commerce platform. When you search, what his initial implementation did, give me the number of product categories, and then he's iterating through all the product categories. And for every product, he was then querying the database by looping through a list of IDs and therefore ending up, as you can see here, with 26,000 database calls to execute a very simple query against the database to figure out which products in the product catalog match a certain criteria. This was not a problem in the beginning when he sold his software to very small shops, but this became a problem with organizations that had thousands of articles in the catalog. And the same pattern is also apparent in architectures where one service calls another one. This is again distributed trace visualization just showing you the cascading effect of one service calling another recursively. And this goes on and on and on. This is not a good sign. And it's, very, it's visually very easy to understand when you look at this, that there's obviously something, maybe not wrong, but something to definitely need to look into. Now, this talk is not about more performance patterns that you may already know or maybe not already know, but I think performance problem patterns are very important because if we understand patterns, we know how we can detect them visually. And hopefully when we can detect them visually, we can also figure out how can we detect them by looking at key metrics, like how many database statements are called. How many calls do I make to another service? What's the, the payload? 
These are a couple of these problem patterns and also the metrics to look into. If you want to know more, I did over the last couple of years several talks where I talk specifically about all these patterns, giving examples. The links on the bottom, please take a uh, for people in the room, of course, take a screenshot, but this, the, the links are also in the slides and they will be shared. So my point is understand your patterns and then derive your metrics from it. Which really gets me to once we know metrics on how to detect bad patterns, we can then automate the analysis. And the automation is brought to you today by Captain. That's the CNCF Sandbox project that I've been working on for the last couple of years. And the reason why we built Captain, well, there were many different reasons, but it was, it was in the end, uh, really, we wanted to save people from building a lot of automation that they then have to maintain. And so we wanted to provide a better, better uh, alternative because you should not build and maintain large scripts for automating things. So coming back to the use case of performance, because I would love more people to automate performance analysis into the delivery pipeline. So hopefully you're not sure if you're running performance tests, yes or, yes or not. But what I see a lot of people are held back in including performance tests in every build. Why? Because many that are executing tests, they have beautiful dashboards, their Grafana dashboards or their, their whatever load runner dashboards or whatever tool they're using. And while these dashboards are pretty to look at, it's really hard to analyze them unless you're really expert and within a second you know if this is good or not. So this doesn't scale, even if you already deploy automatically and test automatically, but analyzing manually is hard. So what we bring to the table with Captain is really an automated way of taking the knowledge you have in your head, the knowledge that you put on the dashboard, which metrics are important and which patterns you're identifying on these metrics, and automatically analyzing them for you, scoring them and then giving you an easy score to say, this is solid and sound, or we rather go immediately back and figure out why we make 10,000 database calls or why we are consuming so much memory, okay? So a little closer look, how does this work in Captain? Now we, I talk about uh, SLOs, service level objectives. The way this works in Captain is you define a list of SLIs. Right, SLIs is nothing else than a metric. I have an example here, five metrics, response time, query failure rate, and, and, and a couple of more in the bottom, even an open security vulnerability. If you, if you have a tool that provides you the number of open vulnerabilities, it's a great metric to have. So you specify what you normally look at. Then in Captain, you specify your target, your SLOs, where we allow you to do two things, either warning or pass, meaning you expect a certain metric to have a certain value. Where we go a step further, you can not only specify a certain, let's say, response time. What does it say here? Response time should be faster than 100 milliseconds, then it's green, or 250, then it's warning. If you look down to the test step login response time, we're actually combining it. You can say test step login, this particular function that we're testing, should be faster than 150 milliseconds, but also should not get slower by more than 10% to the previous good builds. So we can also do regression detection automatically on metrics. So you specify the metric, you specify your SLOs, and you specify your overall target. So build number one comes along, you're pushing your pipeline, Captain automatically reaches out to your Prometheus, to your APM tool of choice, pulls in the metrics, compares them against your objectives, grades everything, and then you get a score between zero and 100. We are normalizing uh, this to 100 points in total. You can specify weights if you want to, but you can also specify individual metrics as key metric or key SLI. So build number one looks good. Build number two comes along. The developer may have made some changes. What do we see? Oh, uh, things getting slower, plus we all of a sudden make more data, more calls to the backend service, like a recursive call maybe even, and therefore we're getting penalized. So we're getting less points and therefore immediately feedback that this build should not be go all the way through because we would end up making twice as many calls to the backend service once this goes into production. I get immediate feedback, maybe I fix the thing, build number three comes along, it looks like I fixed the performance problems, I brought the number of service calls back to one, but all of a sudden I've introduced a security vulnerability. This is also part of performance, right? Because if it doesn't secure, if it's not secure, then who cares about the best performance? So again, I'm getting penalized. So that in the best case scenario, build number four comes along, everything is green again. This is the way 
Captain works. This is the way we are allowing you to define what metrics, what indicators are important, what you want to compare it against, but instead of you doing it manually, we do this fully automatically for you. Uh, a little bit behind the scenes with Captain, when you kick off the evaluation, we have a so-called lighthouse service, and the lighthouse service is triggered by the SLO definition. You define your SLOs in the YAML that you put next to your source code in your source code repo. You can see a little, I know it's a little small maybe from the back, but objectives, error rate, JVM memory, number of database calls, where you specify what do you expect these metrics to be. But here's the important thing. This is your, what you expect. This might be your architect, your performance engineers, your site reliability engineers. But where do these metrics come from? Captain is agnostic to the underlying observability platform. You can build a service that then delivers the data in every service, like for instance, we have integrations with Prometheus, with Dynatrace, with Neoload, with Refront. You would then define, or whoever is responsible for observability and monitoring in your organization, you then define how do you actually query this particular piece of data? Like, how do you get error rate? How do you get the number of database calls? So it's separated. Objectives and how you get the data is completely separation of concerns, because typically two different teams are responsible for that. Okay, and when you trigger the evaluation, what happens? Captain reaches out through an event to that tool. Everything is event-driven. Retrieves the data, and then as all the data is retrieved, pulls it back, compares it against the objectives, and then you get your scoring. So this is the core component of Captain, this SLO validation. To give you one example, one of our early adopters, Christian, he was responsible for maintaining GitLab pipelines and his task was to also include an SLO validation every time the GitLab pipeline deploys and tests. And now he's just making a call to Captain where Captain is doing all the evaluation for him, saving a lot of time. Because otherwise he would have built all this logic in his GitLab pipeline himself. We provided it for him and it works out of the box. And in his case, he's using data, Dynatrace as a data source. So this is the core component that allows us to analyze SLOs very easily and get this into existing pipelines. But the thing is, Captain, we wanted to solve a much bigger problem. But the core is this data-driven approach where we always go towards SLOs and analyze how your system is currently doing. What we want to really solve with Captain is the following thing. A quick show of hands, who is using Jenkins in your organization? Okay. Who is using GitLab? Perfect. Who is using PowerShell scripts for deployment? Right? And, or, these are all great tools, but the thing is they're all doing certain things pretty well. But what we have observed is your classical pipeline has a hard-coded set of steps, hard-coded integrations with your tools. Even sometimes you have configuration in your pipeline. I've seen Jenkins pipelines also internally in our organization where you have your YAML files, your, def your, your deployment definitions files, hard-coded somewhere in the Jenkins pipeline. This doesn't scale. This, this becomes very ugly very fast. So what we said, we want to solve this problem because we want, to make it we want to make the life easier for people that need to automate more things into their pipelines. So what we do with Captain, we are ripping apart the hard-coded process and tooling. On the left side, you can specify, we call it ship in, a, in a shipyard file automation sequences. So you specify what tasks you want to execute, uh, you want to execute. On the right side, you have your toolings completely separated. The configuration, all the configuration is maintained in the Git repository. And then we're using eventing to connect the two things together. So to give you an example, because we're talking about performance engineering here. If you want to use Captain for the complete sequence for performance engineering, you want to deploy a new artifact, you want to test it, and you want to have it evaluated. So you specify deploy, test, and evaluation without any tool context. And in my example, then, I can say Captain trigger performance in a certain stage, and I give it some additional metadata, like what image do I want to test? What Captain then does, it sends a cloud event out to the world and says, who is there in my environment that can deploy this particular artifact in staging with a blue-green deployment strategy? I may have Helm doing it, I may have an Argo pipeline, I may call GitLab, I may call a Jenkins pipeline. This is all event-driven, and our tools can then subscribe to the event to then do the actual action. Once it's done, sending it back. Next thing is test. Captain sends an event, I need somebody that can execute a performance test in staging. Today, 
you may use JMeter. The nice thing about this is if your organization decides next, next year you're going to a different tool, you don't need to update any of your automation code. The only thing you need to do is you turn off the subscription for the event for JMeter and you just let your new tool subscribe to the cloud events. They're all standardized. That's the beauty. Switching tools becomes a thing of a subscription to the event bus. And then the evaluation, that's the key thing. I explained this, how this works earlier. Captain sends an event out to your observability tool. Please give me the data that is specified by the performance engineers in the SLO files, in the SLI files. And then give me back the data and then give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if it's done, what I've completely forgot on the bottom right, it says notification tool. You can have multiple tools subscribing to the same events. So for instance, if you want to get a Slack notification after the evaluation is done, you just have Slack subscribe to that event and then you get it every time the test is finished. So terminology wise, we call the left side the definition of the automation sequences a shipyard file. We call the tools that are subscribing to captain events the uniform, right? Because the captain, the captain on a ship needs a uniform. That's the tools, the tool belt. We have all the config in the config repo that captain maintains. And then we have cloud events. And we're currently working with the CDF, the Continuous Delivery Foundation, in a special interest group to standardize these CDF events so that in the future, hopefully, every tool out there that you use, deployment, testing tools, will just automatically understand cloud events. And then finally, nobody of us needs to maintain any custom tool integration scripts anymore. Where you call API 1 and then you try to figure out what's the response, how can you parse it, and then they change the version of the tool and then you need to change your integration. This should be a thing of the past. So my point is that I want to make is what's the nice thing about Captain, and especially when it comes to performance engineering. You pick your SLOs, your metrics and the objectives that you have. Right? If you think about how I started, understand your application, pick your SLOs, then you are hopefully have some tests because without tests, you don't generate any traffic, right? I mean, Captain doesn't take away the pain of you having to write tests, but we take away the pain that uh, we are triggering and orchestrating the test execution. You can also use obviously Captain for the complete end-to-end -end automation. So it's not just constrained to one thing. So Captain orchestrates all of this for you. On the right side, you see all the tools. We're not replacing any tool. We want you to use the tool of choice for a particular task. There's so many great tools out there. I mentioned earlier GitLab, Jenkins, they're all great tools. If you have invested in this, don't throw them away. But don't build additional automation code. I always say, friends, don't let friends build their own automation. Friends first, first suggest their friends to look at Captain. Yeah. I know it's a bold statement on the bottom, but it says 90% less custom automation code. That's what we've seen from people like Christian I brought up earlier. Uh, it's event and data driven. It's based on open standards and all the configuration is stored, maintained and versioned in Git. Now, Captain in the real world, how does Captain look like outside of my little uh, environment here? Um, I am from Austria. It's also a famous song in Austria, but it's also uh, why I'm very proud of this here. Uh, Austrian uh, online banking uh, is currently completely automatically validated with Captain. So their software organization, they're called Raiffeisen Software. There's also a Medium blog post, or a blog post on Medium on the bottom. Um, every time they push their new services, their new builds through their Jenkins pipelines, they have Captain automatically validate that release based on their SLOs. Another cool example, because we are talking about performance engineers here, uh, I have a YouTube video on the, on the top, it's a little small, but um, Mike Kobush, he works for NEIC, a National Association for Insurance Companies. Um, he's a, a big load runner expert and is now using also JMeter. And he says when he runs these large scale load tests against the replications, it takes him typically 30 to 60 minutes to analyze the results. With Captain, it takes him one minute. That means every week he has a couple of more hours to go fishing. That's what he told his CTO. And I have, it on, have him on record on this video. Uh, another uh, cool use case uh, is from Vitality. They are a large insurance company. Uh, what they do, they have a central software organization. They're building the services and then they deploy it to the different countries 
So it's the same software, but with different feature flags, they turn on different things that are country specific. And what they're doing, they're testing every single configuration, every single tenant, and then Captain gives them uh, feedback on whether this configuration is good. And what you can see here, the quality gates are all red, so probably they need to invest a little bit more in quality. They're really cool though, it's building great software. Uh, also, this was really nice. I did a presentation a couple of months ago uh, at a performance conference where Tarash, he's a performance engineer at Facebook, he saw Captain and then he made this really cool statement. Uh, Captain feels like a reference implementation of Google's site reliability engineering and the site reliability workbook. Uh, so that's a nice testimonial for uh, especially the development team that stands behind Captain. So, Next slide says, let's wrap it up. I want to wrap it up with the slides, but then I know I'm a little fast, actually. I want to then also show you a little bit of Captain so that you see it's not just screenshots. But my advice for you, this talk is about optimizing performance based on SLOs. I want to just recap how I started my presentation. Understand the applications you're responsible for, or that you're testing, that you're a performance engineer. Look at distributed traces, understand the patterns. Look at my presentations I gave all the links will be in the slides. Next thing is, if you know the metrics, then you can put them on a dashboard. Use your favorite observability tool and put them on the dashboards, right, to see, do these metrics really tell you after a test that something is wrong? And if they do, then you can convert these metrics behind the dashboard into an SLI and an SLO definition in Captain. And then you can have Captain automate that analysis completely for you. And then you want to bake it into your existing tool landscape and have Captain automate all of this fully, well, every time when you trigger a pipeline. Also think about what I, what I said earlier, Captain is not just there for performance analysis. Captain can really orchestrate any type of process. Not only are we, because we don't, I always get the question, so is Captain, it's another Argo? Is Captain another Jenkins? Is Captain, what is Captain? It's just doing delivery, right? No. Captain is bringing you data-driven orchestration of automation sequences, whether this is around anything you need to do in delivery or in operations. We have a lot of users also using us for auto remediation, meaning when there's a problem in production, they then trigger a Captain sequence where Captain first notifies people, then maybe scales up, scales down, does whatever, whatever needs to happen in the context of the problem, then evaluates against the SLOs, this is the critical part, and based on that decides, was the system brought back to a healthy state? If yes, great, if not, execute the next action. So be reminded of that. So Captain is a lot of things. I only had a couple of minutes here to talk about it today with a focus on performance engineering. If you want to learn more, I had a couple of presentations at different conferences. You will find a lot of material about Captain. And we are obviously welcoming every new community member. We have a lot of cool stuff on the Captain website. If you go to captain.sh, then you'll find all the information you need to get started. We also have a live uh, Captain installation, a demo installation that you can click through which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, you can sign up for the Slack, you can install it, you can download it, you can go to GitHub, you can star us, you can do whatever you like, as long as you talk nice things about us. Right? So now I have, I think, three, four, five minutes, right before Q&A, two more minutes at least. Right? I wanna make sure we have qu uh, time for Q&A. You have 10 minutes. Hmm? Got 10 minutes even. Well, again, I'm gonna do a amazing demos. Um, so this is actually the, the, the Captain public uh, demo live environment. And this is the one you get to yourself. So if you go to captain.sh, you can click on explore live demo. That brings you to a little tutorial that explains all the projects that are on here. We're working very closely with Litmus, which was a great partner for us. Um, and it explains the different uh, scenarios. And then you have the link to captain.public.demo.captain.sh, which is this page here. I want to focus on really the litmus example. Uh, what I have here is a so-called Captain Project. And Captain Projects um, are organized in a way that you have a project where you define what type of automation sequence do you want to provide in the context of this project. And then you can have or add services to it. And then these services 
uh, can enjoy the automation. Uh, in this case, I have a hello service, and you can see here that there was a build number 011 deployed, and what I see in the default view, because this is the most important thing as a service owner, what's the quality of the service? You see this heat map that I showed you earlier, right? And, and you see on the bottom, I'm not sure if it's, if how easy it is to see, but on the heat map on the top, that's the score. I only have two metrics here, SLOs that are evaluated, but you can go back in history. If I scroll down a little bit, I see the individual values. I also see against which value it was compared to in case you decide you wanna compare also with previous releases. So that's really neat. Most importantly, this is just the thing that is most important. Are we green, are we yellow, or are we red? Behind the scenes, much more happened. There was a delivery sequence, and that delivery sequence included first a deployment, then a test, then the evaluation. That means the deployment, in my case, was using Helm. The test was using a combination of JMeter to run some load and Litmus. So the nice thing about an event-driven system like this is you can say, I want tests to be executed, and then depending on your projects, depending on your event subscriptions, you can have one or many tools do something. In this case, I'm running load with JMeter, and at the same time, Litmus kicks in with, with chaos engineering. And once these are done, then Captain triggers the evaluation. Right? So how, does, how can you define this? Right? This is a medium complex uh, environment. Actually, let me show you this here. Uh, every project behind the scenes has a Git repository, as I mentioned, so I click on it. It's all public available. Um, initially, when you create a project, you start with a so-called shipyard file, and this is really kind of your sequence definition. So I have a sequence that is called delivery that does a deployment, a test, and an evaluation. As you can see here, there's no hard-coded tool integration because there are no we don't reach out to a tool with a hard-coded integration. Captain will orchestrate this and will send events to then trigger the right tools. Bless you. And then what's very important is Captain also automatically keeps branches for every, as we call it, stage, um, where you can, you, can, you can group your, your, your automation sequences into so-called stages. And then here you can put in the actual files that then the individual tools need, because obviously Helm needs a Helm chart. JMeter needs a JMeter script. Litmus needs the chaos experiment. For Prometheus, you need, to fig you need to define the queries. But this is all organized in Git. All right, so coming back to my little example here. If I go back, last thing I want to show you. When I triggered this sequence, you can either trigger it through the Captain CLI command line interface or through the API for every step Captain sends a so-called cloud event. Right? This is the stuff we're currently standardizing. So in this case, Captain sends deployment triggered. And then whatever tool you have subscribed to that event can then say, Hi, it's me, I want to do it. Then they send a started event. And once they're done, they send a finished event. Again, these are all cloud events with additional information about what did they do, how did they, you know, in this case, what is the URL? that they deployed my application to, and then this information goes to the next set of uh, tasks that are executed. So in the next event payload that Captain sends out, it contains the initial configuration change, and then all the information that came in from Helm, and then it says, well, in this case, I need to trigger some tests. Right? So it's all event subscription-based. You have your subscriptions here on the, on the so-called uniform page, so you see which tools are actually subscribed in for a particular project for a particular stage. All right, so I, got, I just got the sign. It's time to wrap up because we have questions, hopefully. And yeah, what I want to say, if you are interested in Captain with a booth, uh, with a Captain booth in the pavilion, uh, I think tomorrow, like tonight, also tomorrow after two and on Friday. I also want to say a big thank you to Dynatrace. Dynatrace is my employer, and Dynatrace is the big sponsor of this project, and I want to say thanks for investing in open source and giving people a chance to work on this. Um, and yeah, if you are interested also in that, we also have a booth down, uh, I think it's G11. But I now I want to open up for questions, in case there are questions. If you have questions in the audience, then over there. Similar. 
Yeah, so the question was to repeat, what's the difference to Argo? Argo ana uh, analysis works, right? Because it does a similar, not the Argo deployment orchestration thing. Yeah. It does something similar, similar, right? Where you can sort of select the metrics for you from each use. Okay, yeah. It needs an approval or that kind yeah. of stuff. Okay, so the, the, the question was specific, how do we compare to Argo analysis? Because they also pull in some metrics. Uh, I don't want to say there's no overlap, but what we try to be is we try to be not a tool just for delivery, right? That's what I wanted to say earlier. With Captain, you can automate sequences that you need to automate in delivery, but also in operations. And what we do, we always pull in data through our SLI and SLO definition that then allow the orchestrator to decide, do we go on or not? If you are happy with Argo and your Argo analysis, and that's fine with you, then it's good, right? If you can, with Argo, uh, orchestrate your deployment, your tests, your evaluation, and then you notify, and if you switch, you want to switch from, let's say, one tool to another, and you are, and that's fine, then, then, then stick with it. What I showed you today is a separation of concerns between process definition, you can define whatever process, and the tooling is separated. The magic behind the scenes is that they are connected through events. So you can, at any point in time, change the tooling without you have to think about what this means for the process definition. Because the process doesn't change just because you change the tooling. Also, think about my test scenario. I have a test step because that's what I want to do. In one project, I may do functional test. In a second, I may do load test. And maybe next year, your company says, we need to add security tests to every process, every project. The only thing you have to do is subscribe to the test event, and then automatically your security tool kicks in. So these are some of the considerations that we have put into the architecture of Captain. And it's not constrained to delivery, even though we talk a lot about delivery. Automated remediation in production, you define your sequence, what you want to do when a problem strikes in production. Do right? you want to first notify people, then you want to, I don't know, scale up, then you want to validate, then you do the next step. So you can define, we call them remediation runbooks, but they are orchestrated in the same way as you saw for the delivery use case. Yeah. But see it for yourself, right? I don't want to say it solves all of your problems if you're already happy with what you have. Uh, hi, thank you for the great uh, presentation. Thank uh, you. I was going to ask about the, uh, uh, what is the best, the best practice that you see when it comes to um, microservices? So do you usually uh, have a captain uh, test suite per microservice or do you uh, spin up the Thing, mm. run all the against that. What yeah. Is the best yeah. So the question is, what's the best practice for microservice architectures? Do you rather try to test microservices individually, or do you deploy everything and run everything at once? I think the, the the best practice is do both, right? If it's possible, that means if you have a microservice and you can run it in isolation. That means you can mock away the dependencies, or at least you can deploy an environment where all the dependencies are also just there, and you can run tests against it, then this is the ideal state. Because remember, my number one problem pattern I had today, it was the M plus one query problem. If your microservice has always made one call to the database, and all of a sudden, it makes five calls to the database, then you don't need to deploy the whole app in a big environment, because you already know something has changed that will have a mega, a huge impact later on. So. These patterns, they can, most of them can be found just by testing it in isolation as long as you have the data of how many, like the test call that goes in into the service and the calls that go out. And this is where distributed tracing is so great because it shows you that. Sorry, yeah? as a, a follow-up, yeah. uh, can you share a test suite between, the, if you have like many, many services? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so the question is, can you share test suites? Yes, I showed you earlier that, that for instance, the JMeter files that were uh, stored in Git. So you can either store them on the main branch, then it's available for every service in every stage. You can store it on a branch level, then it's available for every service in that, in that, in that stage, or you can define it on the individual service per stage. So it's like an inheritance level that we have there. Say it again. New Relic. And new Relic? If yeah. Captain supports New Relic? Yeah, and Bitbucket. And Bitbucket. So I would love if Captain would support New Relic. Uh, it doesn't do it right now. We have, a, 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 however, a Git issue out there ready for New Relic for Datadog. Uh, and I think also in Stana, we just would, you know, it's an open source project. That's why if you have New Relic, if you have Datadog or any other data providers, 
then you know join us and uh, and and help us implement. It's just it's very simple. We have templates for building these SLI providers, like we built for Prometheus and Dynatrace. But I think, as far as I know today, we don't have one for New Relic, but we have an open feature request. Um, I think the challenge would be like actually implementing the subscriptions and getting a tool to integrate that. What does that actually look like? Is there libraries yeah. to do that or? So yeah, um, maybe I quickly. So the nice thing about this is, so Captain Sandbox, right? All of our, all of our um, new services start in Captain Sandbox, right? So we have Jenkins library, Artifact, blah, 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 Sandisk, so all of the integrations. If you want to get started, there's this, uh, a, a service, a Captain service template. So this is just a Go template that you clone and then you just put in your, um, let's see, there's a lot of, I mean, it's, this is what subscribes to the tasks. Exactly. Yeah. The only thing you then need to do is you just implement the event handler, right? So. And then all of this runs in Kubernetes. Exactly. So that service, you deploy that service in Kubernetes, let's say on your target server, and that in, in the configuration of that service, you say, I want to subscribe to this event. And then this really then becomes the service that then obviously calls, let's say, the New Relic API. Um, or whatever else you want to integrate. Now we are currently working with the CDF Foundation in a special interest group to completely standardize all of our cloud events, which means once this standard is through, then companies like New Relic and others, if they just built this natively into their product, right, they open up a cool new opportunity because we all of a sudden standardize on events that everybody will benefit from. Yeah. I think this was designed. For me, uh, I'm, I will be here, as I said, a little longer for the people in the room and for those that are online, uh, feel free to um, connect with me through LinkedIn, Twitter, or also on the Slack channel. Very happy to follow up with you. Thank you. <laughs>